Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody. How are we doing today? Hopefully you are doing quite well. That's always a good thing, a positive thing. So today on this episode, this is our second part of the Lego City stuff. We are talking about three Pretty large sets, pretty quality, pretty good quality sets here that are full of enjoyment for your playing needs or your maybe your Lego City needs. Either way, some good stuff. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the Fire Command Truck 60374. This thing has just over 500 pieces and retails for 65 bucks here in the United States and 55 euros. So the cool thing about this is it is one, oh my God, big piece of truck. <laughs> uh, gorgeous, gorgeous truck. I love the way this thing is done. It is just, it's a big truck. You can play with it with your hand. Again, r- grabbable to be able to maneuver this thing around. It's, it's just so much fun. Uh, to be able to play with. So let's talk about what it has to offer. Now in the front of this thing and just like with the cars that we had talked about that have the front, uh, the front and rear clips that are removable, you have removable clip here in the front. This one here, as it shows, has a uh, hook on it that has a string so you can wind that thing up. It is your winch, which is nice. It uses some grill pieces here on the sides, the one by two grill pieces in white, and then has some clear lights behind that. Very, very wide vehicle. This is a little bit more than six studs wide. If you count everything, it's probably closer to eight studs wide based on um, pretty much how everything is really kind of sticking out there. So uh, a really big vehicle, you know, pretty uh, synonymous with Lego speed champions. If you're familiar with that. So you have your uh, little bar here, your Bush bar that it has. It's got some lights that are on there. You have a print, believe it or not, of the fire symbol here on that uh, fireman um, yellow color. We're just going to roll with that because you see that a lot with uh, modern day fire trucks, fire engines, ambulances and stuff. It's a it's a very well-known color. It's not just red. It's, it, you know, it really sticks out. So you have that uh, color right there. It is flanked by two slopes on each side that are the same color. And then you have some red slopes that are on the side of that. So as we move back into the crew quarters, before we get into it, on the top you have this giant big fat bolt shooter, not the real skinny ones, you got a big fat one here. Um, This thing can be maneuvered up and down, it spins 360 degrees around, and it's a simple thing to shoot, obviously, of course, of course it's simple. That covers, uh, that is on top of the roof section that covers your driver compartment and your uh, crew compartment person that's, you know, looking at data or whatever. Now, the cool thing is your bolts are hidden in the rear of the truck, but you get different colored bolts. You get a blue one, which is supposed to be water. And then you get one of that opalescence color, which is supposed to be like the soap, you know, the aircraft soap. You don't spray water on, you know, jet fire, jet fuel uh, fires or grease fires, you know, that kind of thing you spray this kind of soap onto it. So that's kind of neat to be able to have two different uh, separate bolts, the big chunky bolts. So you have some lights that are here on on top of your wind windshield, windscreen, whatever you want to call it. Down inside your compartment, it only has seat for one and it is dead center, which I'd love to be in a vehicle that is dead center. There are doors on each side, the little tiny short doors, the one by three doors. As uh, you move a little bit further back, you have an, a spot two clips, one for your uh, your safety's, uh, safety saw. <laughs> I was going to say saw saw. <laughs> um, your emergency saw that they use to cut you out of vehicles or, you know, whatever precarious situations. You've got your newer style axe that is here. Then your crew compartment just behind that uses the same doors, except they open in the reversed fashion. You have a printed uh, computer screen in here. You have a, uh, printed 
keyboard as well. Again, just one spot for a crew member, not multiples. Now, the nice thing is, as you run down the sides of each of those little cabin compartments, you do have the little kind of step-ups, which are really nice. Those uh, modified type tile step-ups, uh, they put two of them here, and they look really good in the way that those are done. So just to the rear of that, you have a few different things. We're going to start on the sides here. The sides fold down on each side. It has red, has a little bit of black, and then it has, you know, that uh, fireman type color, that fire engine yellow color that we see often. So unfortunately, these two um, are not uh, prints. They are stickers, which kind of sucks. You know, you're like, oh, I get more. No, you don't. You, you just don't because it's on a two by four tile. Anyway, so inside of there, you roll this, you pull this thing down. You could roll it down, I guess, if you think of it like that. And inside, inside you have a robotic vehicle, which are really becoming much more popular these days. I know of a fire station, firehouse here, not far from us, about 30 minutes. I say that's not far, you know, in the bigger city that uses these um, and that at least has one. It's kind of neat. Four wheel vehicle that it has here. It does have that one, uh, two by two slope that does have the fire print on it. It just has a little robotic arm here that can be stretched out, has a little alien arm on the uh, robot arm on the end of it and the ball joint here at the back side of it to connect it to the vehicle. So you get a lot of range of movement here uh, to do a lot of different things. Just kind of a build up little vehicle, nothing super special, uh, but it is kind of nice to be able to get. So you can tuck that thing back in there you do have to kind of maneuver the arm a little bit just so that it does get back in there. Not anything really bad or anything of the sort. So then on top here, you have a two by two modified tile that has the open stud here in the center. That is to attach your ladder. Now your ladder has two different attachments to it. You have the white railroad track piece, and then you also have the kind of standard uh, ladders that we've seen that has the clips on the end that attaches across the top, which is really nice. Now down inside of your fire truck in the very back end of this, you have some, you got a lot of space in there. Well, it's great because you've got to have a place to put some of your really cool stuff and what fire truck would be complete without having uh, a, a, a drone <laughs> to put in here. Why would you not have a drone? Of course, you know, <laughs> but you can, you can tuck your drone in there and it fits quite nicely. It is a four prop drone. So you do have that. Um, it is a big drone, by the way, it's not a tiny one. Anyway, so you have, uh, the red color scheme, some white in here, and you have that fire, uh, fire truck yellow, Again, another print here, which is nice. You have two stud shooters, tile shooters here. And what you have is blue, the trans blue, which is supposed to be water and the opalescence again. And they give you multiple so that in case you lose one, just like always, you have a backup. But that is really cool yet again to have something similar, um, just like we've seen in the front of the vehicle, which is really nice. Tucks in real simple, real easy, nothing complex, nothing like you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? It's super duper easy. Anyway, so the sides of the truck, technically, if you wanted to, you could take them off because they are just clipped into place. There's two clips that holds each side panel on the side. They are the cargo container pieces that they use on their side here. A lot of studs on the side there with that build. So as you move to the very rear of this thing, you have a few things. You have each side of the rear end of your truck from the very rear end uh, has a piece that folds down. You have an opalescent piece and then you have the trans blue that folds down. You have stickers on each that let you know, hey, this is what you're supposed to use. One, if you have an electrical fire, that's what it's showing you. And one, if you just have regular fire. So you have those. Those are really nice. And then your bolts are tucked into there. You also have two little areas where you can you have compartments. You could store some other things. The doors fold down. Um, we've seen these pieces used as like uh, mailboxes or something like that. So it's really nice. This is a six wheeled vehicle. You have dual wheels in the back on each side, which is phenomenal. I love that. So your truck is actually a really big giant behemoth, which, you know, this is the main bulk of what you are paying for. This is, this is why you are spending your very hard earned currency. Now, the cool thing about this is you do get two little play sets that do come along with this. 
little. I mean, really, really little. And the first one here is you have a electrical panel box, whatever you want to call it. And um, you've got that. And what is going on here? I, I think it's almost supposed to be like a, you know, it's an electrical box at the bottom, but it almost looks like a, a cell tower or something like that with the way that this is built up with these, um, these bars that are hanging up top here. Now, this is not really hinged, but it is Technic pinned into place so that it does swivel because on the other end of it, you have a fire piece, one of the new standard fire pieces that they have in the trans orange, which is really cool. You have a two by two yellow tile that has a print on it that has what is supposed to be like the electric arrow that we see, you know, the electric lightning bolt that we always see on this kind of stuff. So that is that is something cool to be able to get. Not not, you know, you might be able to use it in a mock build or something like that. I'm sure you could with a city build. Anyway, so this is all on a green plate. You have a red trans uh, one by one round bl uh, brick and then same with the green here, trans green. And that I guess is supposed to let you know like everything's good or everything's not. Obviously, if this thing is sticking up in the air, everything is good. If it's sticking down, obviously, it's, if it's falling down, it's not. And then your fire is sticking up. And that is where you are trying to shoot your bolts or you're using your uh, vehicle, you're using your, your drone, whatever you want to use to be able to extinguish the fire. Now, you do have a minifig that comes with this section. It is supposed to be for this. You have a kind of like a fireman type mechanic guy that is going on here. Um, I, now he is wearing a vest. He's not really a fireman, but you know, it's that same color that, that fireman yellow that we see. It is that same color. So he is wearing his vest. He does have a print here that has uh, his radio and his radio pack on it, which is really cool. Uh, he comes with a wrench. So he's doing some work on the, on the stuff. Now he has two faces. He has a really cool mustache, by the way. I love this mustache. He's kind of normal going about his business. And then the other one is definitely a fear look like, oh my God, this thing is on fire. What do I do? Well, you call 911 or whatever country you live in, you call the emergency number. Now, what I thought was really unique here is it is the dual molded safety hard hat with the long hair. I don't recall seeing a what is, I guess, supposed to be a male minifig with this hairpiece before. So I, I thought that was kind of neat. I've seen guys with ponytails and stuff like that everywhere. When we go to the grocery store, there's one of the, the clerks, same thing. So it's nice to be able to see that in Lego form. So one of the other builds that you have here, it is on a, another green plate, and it's supposed to be where there's a little bunny. This little bunny's, I guess, cave. They don't really make a cave bunny is around here digging into the dirt and stuff, but maybe I guess they could use a cave, but you get a nougat colored bunny and he's in there. And what has happened is there is a tree that has fallen down and is kind of blocking the way, blocking the exit here. And well, what do you need to do? You need to save the bunny. What can you do? Well, you've got a winch that is in the front of your fire truck. You could always use that. You could use the robot to the four wheeled robotic vehicle to come out and do all that whatever you want to do. Good play stuff here. So you've got some minifigs here for your firefighters. You've got two firefighters. You have one that's kind of in standard firefighter garb. Minifig is black, which is really nice. Some good printing. You have your air tank. Uh, what, do, what do you want to call it? The oxygen monitor to let them know how much oxygen they have. You got a, a D ring on the one side that is printed. This only comes with one minifig face. She, uh, she just, has one minifig face. I don't know why, because the helmet is the newer style, or I, th I think this is almost like a European style helmet, which is uh, really nice. It's that again, fireman yellow, and then it's got a black rim and a black kind of tail or shield rim on the back end, you know, to protect your neck and, and stuff like that from fire. It also does come with the little clear shield that can be clipped into place there, which is nice. And then you have your other dude. You've got your dude that is standing on top of the fire truck and he is controlling that giant cannon that is up there to be, be able to extinguish all kinds of fires of all varieties. So this guy has a dark bluish gray. Well, it's kind of more of like a gunmetal gray, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. A gunmetal gray color here. Um, that is his suit. 
Again, kind of a similar print on here, but it is different. It is unique to him. So you do have two different prints here. Uh, but he has his fireman hat on and he's got the oxygen, you know, that oxygen piece that we have seen forever. His breathing apparatus that is attached to a blue air tank that is on the back. It's got the shield as well, which is really nice to be able to get. He's coming with a, a radio walkie talkie, whatever you want to call it. And it has a one by two printed tile on it with some stuff. Maybe it's letting him know what is going on, but he is his, his minifig face is really nice. He's kind of like, ah, man, I'm roasting. And you can tell that because he's got sweat droplets coming down his face. So I love this set. It was something really cool to play with. Uh, the bolt shooter up on top does work really well. Not so much with the electrical uh, fire, like you can hit it, but it doesn't really knock it um, off. You really kind of have to hit it hard to be able to knock the fire piece off. But, you know, you, as a kid, they're they're just going to have fun with it no matter what. So, um, yeah, I think uh, the price point on it is pretty fair for the most part. You're getting a lot of chunky pieces here, so that is definitely going to add to the cost. But as a whole, I think it's a lot of fun to play with and well worth the money, honestly. All right, so moving along, the next set on deck here that we have to talk about is the Emergency Vehicles Headquarters, the HQ of your police, of your your fire, of uh, all your stuff, ambulance, everything that you need to know. 60371 is the set number in case you are keeping track, which you should be. 706 pieces or what is on this thing or in this thing. $70 here in the United States and 65 euros across the pond. For all you nice, lovely people over there. So this thing has a few different builds that are to it. I really want to start with the small one here because I love the way this is done. It made me laugh too much. I probably laughed way harder than I should have. I'm sure my wife and my son looked at me like I was some kind of special friend, but <laughs> I'd lost my mind. But you have this Little kind of like a forest picnic area scene. You've got a brick built tree that has some green leaves up top and two red apples that are hanging from it. Then you have this outdoor grill that is in this flame uh, orange color, flame yellow, whatever you want to call it. And the, the grill actually looks really nice. You get those one by two grill pieces when I don't mean like, like, oh, my grill on my back patio, like the actual grill pieces that they use for all kinds of different things. These are in the trans red, so you know this thing is hot. It is cooking your stuff. Maybe it's a charcoal grill, but no, it can't be a charcoal grill because you've got um, some like buttons that are on the front of this thing. But this lady, this awesome elder woman, she is cooking. She's cooking some hot dogs because, you know, it's, uh, it's what she wants to do at the park. She wants to cook up some hot dogs and, you know, enjoy her day. Well, the problem she runs into is... Well, these lovely hot dogs are turning black and they're getting really bad. And before you know it, there is fire. There is fire on top of the grill. It's really, really bad. It's just the tree has caught on fire. The grill is on fire. It is definitely in need of a fire department to come rescue this situation and keep everybody safe. So we'll talk about that vehicle here that you can use in a little bit. If you have the fire truck, you already know <laughs> what you can use to put out the fire. So the other thing that comes with this, you get multiple vehicles. I want to talk about those. The first one that you get, or I shouldn't say the first one that you get, but one of them that you get is a police vehicle. It's a little police SUV, and it's actually done really, really well. I love how they have kind of done these new city vehicles where you have clips on the side so that you can put things in and out as you so choose, interchange things. It's really, really nice. Now, it's not a very long-bodied vehicle. It's definitely not anywhere near the size of the ice cream truck, ice cream truck, of the Slurpee truck. See, I'm stuck from last year. <laughs> or uh, definitely not the fire truck that we just talked about. But it's a nice little SUV. It almost kind of looks like a more like an old school Bronco, not so much of the a Ford Bronco, not so much like the new ones, but not, not really bad. I kind of like the way this is done. So up front, you do have a sticker that is your license plate. You have some amber colored cheese wedges that are here for your lights. You got some trans blue that is up here as well. Uh, tran yeah, trans blue 
for your uh, lighting that is up here as well. You have a sticker that is on the front that has that gold star, which is supposed to be the police emblem inside of that little badge, which is nice. You get some uh, stair steps on the side so that when you're getting in your vehicle, because this is meant to be more of like a, maybe like an off-road vehicle, a bigger police SUV, not so much like a sedan type car or whatever, you know, anyway. So the nice thing about this is, You've got a big old section in here. You've got a big old spot to be able to do all kinds of different things. You could have your minifig sit in the front and drive. Obviously, that's what you want. But in the rear, you could put some stuff in there. There's a spot. It is four studs that are on the floor. Or you could put your handcuffed bad guy in there, which accompanies this set. And we'll talk about it in a moment. But your roof section is two big old pieces that are kind of attached together together are attached together and then you have some one by two uh trans blue tiles that are on the roof for the police lights but here is my favorite thing you have these things that are on the side by the way the color scheme of this is mainly blue and then you have that fire engine yellow that goes down the sides i love that but you have these pieces that clip into the side here that are multiple different things you can interchange these uh, with some of the other vehicles and we'll talk about those here in a little bit, but you know, these are the main things that go with this vehicle more so than the others, but they're still really nice to have the ability to interchange. So on the one side you have this camera, it's like a big old camera. I'm assuming that's what it is. It's got the one by two printing tile that we've seen for the walkie talkie on the, uh, on the last set. So you've got that on the other side though, you have a light, you've got this big old brick built big old built up light with uh, one by one round tiles in that trans yellow, which is nice. And then in the rear, you've got your windshield that is in the back. So your bad guy can either look out that way or he can look through the, the grate in the front knowing he's going to jail because he is a bad guy. And then in the rear, you got some red and amber lights as well. Now, the next vehicle that comes with this set is an ambulance. We, we need more ambulances. I love ambulances. I'm so stupid for liking these like I do. <laughs> I don't mean like I'm stupid, but it's just like, why do you like these so much? <laughs> I don't know, but I do love them. So your scout, your color scheme here is mainly white and teal. You've got teal that runs around the whole bottom of this. The teal wheel well arches are really nice as well. So in the front of this thing, you have some grates. You have the same trans blue lighting that is, you know, through throughout all of these builds across the top of here, um, just above the grill. You have a sticker here of what the vehicle and the set number is. Of course, why not? But as you move uh, further towards the cabin, you have the one by three doors here in white that open, which again, that's always an important thing. Is it not? You know, you need to be able to get in there. So your assembly here for your the top of your uh, compartment for your driver, it can come off in one whole piece, believe it or not. The roof can come off and the windscreen come off. You throw your minifig in there and there you go. Now, on top of the roof, you've got some cheese wedges in the darker uh, trans blue color here. And then you have a sticker across this six wide slope that, uh, you know, it's got the standard kind of snake down the pole type thing. And it's got some checkerboard pattern in the teal and the white there. I, 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 re I really like the way that is done. So then you have inside of here, you have your steering wheel, of course, of course. And then it is arched and open to the rear because that is where your stretcher, your patient is or whatever. One of the other things I wanted to mention, I totally forgot about it. You can take off the roof of this thing separately or you can take it off with the windshield. It is completely up to you. It depends how you grab it. So as we move towards the rear, you've got these big old giant windows that are sticking out here. You know, you've got a lot of light going in there, which is weird. Why would you want all this light going into an ambulance? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you've got a victim in there. You got somebody that is in crisis that may be bleeding all over the place. They got a giant head wound. They've got an arterial bleed. I know I'm going really deep and gross here, especially for those of you that don't like blood. Well, before we move on any further, we've got to take a quick break. We will be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere. So anyway, what you're getting on the side of this, you have a spot. You've got clips here again. You can clip in a bunch of different things. 
from the helicopter we're going to talk about, from the police vehicle we're going to talk about, to this, obviously we're talking about, you can clip in a whole bunch of different things. So on this one right now, I've got this little pack that is clipped onto the side. I don't know if it's necessarily an AED or anything like that, but you've got this clipped into place. It has a one by two tile that is on here that is printed, has some gauges, has that speed of 82 that is on there, but you know what? It could, it could really be used for anything. It has a blue light blue or uh, syringe here. Got some lights that are on it and it has a cast that is clipped into place. I don't know why you'd want your cast on the outside, but whatever on the adjacent side right now, what I've got is a, well, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a super duper important organ transplant box, you know, with the clear front and it opens up. I don't have any organs. It'd be cool if we got an organ with this. How cool would that be if we got like a heart? Like, oh, you need to make like a, not one of the heart tiles, like a little like heart, get, get some anatomy up in here. That'd be pretty neat. Anyway, so on the inside of this thing, it's obviously wide open. You have a stretcher here. You don't have any fold down legs, so you just slide your stretcher in and it stops. It can only go so far in the front. You got big old doors that are on the rear of this thing that can be opened and obviously closed. Secure everything. You've got that firefighter orange that is on the top. Not supposed to be able to open this from the top, so you don't really have that kind of access. You got some, uh, you got a giant red tile. I say red, uh, trans red tile back here, a one by four, but it's nice because it's big old piece. And I love how this thing is slowly kind of curved in the back. I love the way that is done. Another vehicle like the, you know, we've talked about a few others, very low rider, not very big, not sticking up in the wind or anything like that. So you've got, uh, you got a pretty nice vehicle here. So the next vehicle we need to talk about is one that if you have been listening to this show for a while, we're coming up on five years, believe it or not. Anyway, we got a helicopter. Now Lego has done some really, really cool helicopters. And then they've done some really, really crappy helicopters. And usually when you get a set like this, you really, really get a crappy helicopter. And I've got to admit this is probably one of the better, smaller helicopters that they have done in a long time. I mean, in a long time. I've been hypercritical of these little junky, tiny helicopters. And it's like, here's 25 pieces. Enjoy. You know, they kind of turn into trash. But anyway, so this thing, you've got the standard feet that go on here for your uh, helicopters and stuff like that. And Inside, you've got a canopy, the, kind of the newer style canopy piece that kind of comes to a curve in the front. You have a one by two slope cheese wedge type piece that has print on it that has some gauges and such. You got a stick in here for your pilot and you close him up and he actually fits in there quite well. Now on the sides of this thing, you do have clips. Again, these two pieces can clip into place. They are your stud shooters. They have the water that is in it. This one doesn't have a soap uh, soap stud, but you come with extra so you with the fire truck. So technically, you could use this and, you know, douse the electrical fire if you so desired. Well, obviously, and you had both of them, <laughs> you know. So, uh, little Bobby down the street may not have both of these sets. Anyway, moving further towards the rear, you've got a nice little build up area where your engine is, your exhaust is. I really like the way this is done. You got some grill, uh, grill pieces that are in here, the one by two bricks that have that uh, horizontal and vertical ridge on it, depending on which side you have it put in. And you've got a really nice tail section back here that has a big old long uh, double wide tile. Two stud wide tile. There we go. See, I knew it would come to me. And then you have your tail fin that is back here, has the firefighter print on here with that red flame on the uh, on the silver. Really nice. You just have a tiny little prop. The, the prop could have been a little bit bigger on the rear, that, uh, that side one. Not bad. But your main prop that is up here spins kind of well. It doesn't spin immaculately. It's a little bit tighter. But um, it is really nice. You can actually adjust the blades. They are on click joints, so you can adjust them up. And it also has blue lights that are on the top of it. So some really cool vehicles, really nice stuff to be able to get. You usually don't see police and fire and hospital together. Maybe one or the other kind of sometimes together, but not all three. So now we have to move on to our main focal point here. You've got your hospital. You've got your uh, fire, you've got your police, 
all in one building and it's really nicely done. It is compact. It is not very big. So if you are thinking of like the hospital that we got, what, two years ago, it is nowhere near that. So just keep those expectations in mind. First thing you have here is you've got a really big road plate in front in the dark bluish gray here, and it is to be able to park your police vehicle and your ambulance, which I really enjoy. I, I think that's really nice. You have a two by four tile on each side that lets you know who is parking where. You have the ambulance logo or the police logo in the white and blue, which uh, that it looks really nice. I, I like the way that it is done. Now to the left of that, you have double doors that open. They are the kind of new style doors here. They are glass doors in the trans blue. So you open those, you can get inside if you so choose, but we'll talk about the inside here in a moment. So when you move up to the second story, just above those glass doors, you have this little kind of flower garden that is growing up here, or maybe it could be a vegetable garden, depending how you look at vegetables. Anyway, you've got this little rooftop garden that is growing and you have some solar panels that are up here that are clipped into place. Those are prints. They are the not they are not tiles. As we move to the right of that, this is where you're getting into more of like the kind of command center slash health area slash police and every, kind of everything. It's it's the main everything, <laughs> which is kind of weird. So we'll get to the inside of that when we flip this bad boy around. But just before you get to the big panel window, which is really gorgeous, by the way, you have your logos, you have your stickers here on the teal, which they are teal back stickers as well with the white emblems. You have your police emblem, your fire emblem, your emblem for the ambulance or kind of like a hospital area. Then as you move to the right even further, you have a rounded corner window, which is really nice. And then up on top, what you manage to have are some lights that are sticking down and kind of like the yellow floodlights that are going on. You have some antennas up here, you know, satellite dishes, communication stuff to be able to get all that kind of information as it flows into, you know, your dispatch center or your police station, your fire rescue, whatever. But on top, you have a really nicely built landing pad for your helicopter. My favorite thing about this is that it doesn't have to be clipped into place. Your helicopter is just free standing up there. Kind of like the fire pieces that we use, that they use. Um, they are kind of free standing up here. Your, your helicopter is. So I like the way that is done. You don't have to really worry so much about it, you know, sticking or anything like that. Now there are going to be some people that are going to be you know, knocking this saying, I wish the helicopter would stay in place, but you know, different strokes for different folks. So now we're going to continue to talk about the inside. Well, now talk about the inside. So on the inside of this bad boy, we're just going to go straight down from the helicopter pad because that's the most logical place to go. And down inside of here, which I thought was really kind of weird. I, this thing almost looks like a treadmill. And the reason I want to say it's a treadmill is because it's got a handle on it. It has a one by two tile on it that has printing with gauges and the speed on it. Like we've seen with the, on, on the side of the ambulance, it has a water bottle that is next to it, or it could be a bottle of stuff for a baby, but there is no baby here. And then what you have next to that is you have a big old desk that has three monitors, kind of like I have, except mine are arranged differently. Anyway, these all have uh, stickers on them. They are not prints. You do have a one by one by two tile that is a keyboard. You have a chair that can swivel around. It's the standard Lego chair. Now on your computer screens, you have a mugshot of a bad guy, and he's a really bad dude, of course, you know, and some writing on there, but you can't really see what it says. You have an x-ray up here with a heart that shows the heart off to the side. I'm sure there's some kind of information, but it looks like somebody broke their arm, which would be expected because there's a cast. And then you have a fire screen as well, which has a location that is circled and a flame next to it to let you know, hey, there's a fire at Broad Street. We should send out the fire department. <laughs> I just lost part of the front end of my building. <laughs> anyway, so just below that, you have a little kind of section where... It's just kind of an open space. It's green, so it's it's like almost like it's a balcony. You could walk out of the hospital, walk out of the command center, and just go stand there and get some fresh air or whatever. So then what we have is we have our area where 
People can hang out and stuff. This is where the double doors are where you can come in. There's a coffee maker with a uh, coffee cup here. There's a nice little brick built chair. I kind of like the way that is done. It is just the regular Lego chair in the middle, but it has some brick pieces around it. It looks almost kind of like a love seat, a big old fat chair or something like that. But it is really nice. Then on a two by four tile, we have TV six and there's a Lego rocket taking off. It's the set that we got last year. And um, that's really nice. It's on a little TV screen that can swivel. There's a lot of empty space in here, though. I wish maybe they would have kind of rearranged this in a different way, put that kind of couch on the one side and maybe added a different chair in here. So there is some opportunity for customization if you want to customize something this small, but it is completely up to you. It is not something that is an absolute requirement. It's just really what you want to do. So then we've got to get to the minifigs and there's a number of minifigs in here. There are five. So the minifigs that you get, we are going to talk about. We've got an old lady. We've got some fire. We've got some ambulance. We've got some police and we've got our bad guy, a robber. So let's talk about our robber, our bad guy. And he's a robber because he took money. So this bad guy is on a light bluish gray bicycle frame uh, with the red wheels, the red rims. Anyway, he's taking the money and he's trucking off. He's like, I'm out of here, Nana. He took Nana's money out of her purse. Nana comes with a person. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, he's got the darker nougat color for his top and he's got the jail, you know, the gray and the white uh, stripe print on the inside. He must have just busted out of jail. He's a bad guy. Anyway. He's got a black little hat on and then he's got his, why do they always come with stuff to cover like their eyes? You know, their, their little bandana that goes across their eyes. Like I don't understand that. And he's got kind of like a smug look on his face. Anyway, so that is your bad guy. He's a nice little print though. And then you got your Nana, your Yaya, your, your G mother, your whatever else you want to call her. She is just astounded by the fact that she has been robbed. She comes with two different faces. She has one where she's smiling and happy, and she's got a lot of uh, folds on her face, you know, wrinkles. She's got the smile lines on there, which we all eventually get, you know, especially if you're a smiler. So on the reverse side, though, she's got her eyebrows are up. Her eyes are wide open. Her mouth is wide open. She's like, uh, I just uh, does not really saying anything, maybe. Anyway, so she's kind of confused as to what's going on. She's got her gray hair piece that is up here, which is nice. And then she's wearing this magenta, kind of lighter magenta jacket, which is really gorgeous in the way that the print is done with the buttons in the front. She's got a necklace hanging around her neck, which is printed on there. And she's got her uh, orangish bag that she is carrying, which holds her money. However, it doesn't really hold the money all that well. If if you're kind of thinking of putting this somewhere you're going to have to come up with a solution to really kind of keep that dollar piece that is in there, the standard Lego money piece. So then we have one of our police officers. Well, the only police officer with this set, but this guy is out to go get the bad guy. He, you know, he's got his vehicle. He maybe he's super fast and can run on foot. He's got a blue hat on a dark blue hat on. He's only got one face and he's got the amber colored glasses on. He comes with his handcuffs to do his dirty work. He's got a, a what is supposed to be like a police vest that is on. He's got his badge on there, some pockets. And on the rear side of it, it says police, policia, policia. There's a, there's a movie I can't think of that. That just came from, <laughs> I know I'm totally weird. Moving along, we've got our helicopter pilot here. This guy is in the black uniform. It's the same exact uniform that we talked about on the last set with a female firefighter. He comes with a red helmet with a shield that is on it because, you know, safety first when you're flying. Nothing really special about him. His uh, single face, he's got a nice little really thick beard on here and he's coming with glasses. Then we move on to your paramedic, your uh, EMT, whatever you want to call them. She's got a black hair piece where her hair curls around the front of her body over her shoulder. She's got on the um, the firefighter yellow mixed with some teal here and it's got the emblem on the rear for or on her back for the ambulance. She does come with two faces. She comes with a smiley face and then she comes with a face with a mask over it because, you know, you got to got to stay safe. You know, it could be somebody that could be like, 
you know, spitting up blood. You don't want blood in your mouth, you know. Like I, I went back to the blood again. I apologize to those of you that are, you know, squeamish about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so those are your minifigs that come with this set. I really like this set as a play set. You get some really nice vehicles. I'm sure some of you can build even better vehicles that come with this. But here's what I love about it. You get a few different minifigs. You get a central station. Even though it is smaller, it could have been bigger. I would have been okay paying a, more than than what this is. I'd have been okay if it were like 100 bucks and you just kind of beef this thing up a little bit more. However, good vehicles and the helicopter. The helicopter... I'm sold on the helicopter. It could have been absolute crap. And they really did a good job with keeping it, you know, similar to the other vehicles and in size, maybe not the same amount of parts, obviously, but just kind of keeping it around the same idea. And I applaud them for that. We have to take one more break, but don't go anywhere because there's some incredible stuff coming your way. So we've got one more set to talk about on this episode, and it'll probably close us out in about an hour. Anyway, the next one that we're going to talk about is the Police Training Academy 60372. This thing has 823 pieces, retails for a cool 100 here in the United States, and 90 euros yet again across the pond. Now you've got a lot of stuff going on. We're talking about an ultimate police play set here if you if you really want to get into it you've got equestrian police you've got atv police you've got the, this awesome obstacle course so let's go ahead and break it down so with this set you have a whole bunch of different things that are going on like i had mentioned you have the equestrian stuff that is going on which is really cool looking in the way that it is done and i want to start with that first so you you have a road plate here in green what's well, not so much just a road plate it's not really like a road plate anyway but it's similar with that style well you do come with a horse you get a tan horse here standard style horse and your horse is going through this course of course of course somebody's going to get that reference <laughs> Anyway, so you have two different things, that, well, three different things that you can try and jump across. And the first one here is, well, you have these long one by six, you know, red and white pieces that are just hanging on to bar pieces. That's it. They're just sitting on top of it. They're not clipped into place. They're just, they're doing what they do. And the thing is, you can practice jumping over it. You can actually knock it off and it's not a big deal. You could leave one on. Maybe you're, it's a new horse and they're just training either way. So you go over that, you negotiate that. That is super simple. Then you get to this little area. It's like a red, the red, uh, like boxes that are kind of stacked up. They almost remind me of the boxes that you use to jump on at the gym to get your vertical better. Anyway, so you jump over this, you jump over the box, but on each corner of that box, there are flames. What is going on? Who is putting flames next to the horses? Are you insane? Anyway, maybe there are fireworks that went off. Or maybe you need the fire department to come put them out. Anyway, so you jump your horse over that. And then there are these cross beams. They look like a, a, an X, really. You've got red and white candle pieces that clip together or stick together and then are clipped into place on each side. So you can put those up to put them out kind of out of the way. Uh, you can remove them cause they are on a clip, but uh, not advisable. Anyway, you jump over this thing and you're pretty much done. That is your course right there. That is your horse. And I'm not going to say course anymore. I promise. <laughs> so moving on to the next thing, you do come with a little police vehicle. It comes with a little ATV, four-wheeled ATV. It comes with the blue, and then it's got the firefighter yellow that is in here. Um, nice little vehicle. It does have terrain differencing in differential, I guess you could say, for the wheels. It is that kind of standard, newish standard piece where your wheels kind of swivel back and forth. It's really nice. It's not on a spring anymore like it was in the olden days. But you do have a little handlebar that is here, and you have a do, uh, slope 2 by 2 um, tile that is in the front that has the little police logo that is on a sticker. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the main behemoth, the main focal point, why you chose to spend your money on this. Now, this is a modular style build. There are a lot of different ways. Well, not a lot of different ways, but it, it's nice to be able to get things that are uh, just kind of not completely attached from the very 
you know, from the very beginning until the end. It's not like a, like a true modular or anything like that. This thing can come apart in many, many different ways. And so let's talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start on the bottom left. If you're looking at it, uh, check out the link. If you're listening to this show, check out the link in the show notes, because that's going to give you everything that you need to know um, from Brickset because Brickset does everything. So on the left side of this, what you have is you have a start to your obstacle course, your obstacle course, your climbing wall, which leads to your obstacle course. And they use the triangular uh, uh, flame, the triangular fire engine yellow tiles in here, which are really nice. And they go up the side of that, the first floor up through the second floor. Good stuff. So then just to the right of that, you have double doors, again, double door glass doors that open. And inside of here, this is kind of your equipment storage room. You can put some helmets in here. You can put your saddle in there for your horse. There are studs on the top of this section so that that clips, uh, not clips in, but studs into place uh, with the section above it because it's a modular style. Now, sticking out the side of that, the, you've got an angled piece in here, and that is really just holding Technic pins and, you know, just kind of getting everything into place so that it can kind of lock into place without completely locking into place because you only get one Technic pin, but you get another one that has a Technic side on it and an axle on the other side. Anyway, so moving across, well, that's what we need to do. You have your main section for your horse. This is more so your main equestrian area. So you do have a little gate that swivels open and, um, you know, you get your horse in there. You can put him in from the rear or put it in from the front. It's completely up to you. There's a little bucket that is, whoops, hanging here. And it's got a carrot that is in it and a little brush that is clipped into place just above it. It's got a little light above where your horse is hanging out. And there's a little doorway that leads you to the second area for whatever you would like to do with it. This section is where you could put your ATV. You don't have to, but this is really where your ATV is supposed to go. It's got some little wheel well pieces in here. Not wheel well pieces, but um, tire catching pieces, whatever you want to call it, that are made up of one by two slopes, the little cheese wedge pieces, the one by two ones, so that you have those to catch the rear or the front wheels, depending how you want to put this thing in there. It is opened. And there is a nice gentle slope piece that sticks in uh, from the front for you to be able to use. Really nothing else that is going on there with that piece or that section, unfortunately, because, you know, you always want to do extra stuff. You always want to have that other thing. So we're going to save the very far right for the end because that is kind of the last section of this. So let's go the whole way back to the left, kind of like your typewriter. Click that thing across. If you don't know what a typewriter is, I suggest you Google it. And then we're moving up above that very first section that we talked about. Your climbing wall is still going on. You could pretend that it's a climbing wall or not. But what you do have here is on the very roof part of this section, on the very top you have a little winch that has a handlebar uh, that is clipped into place here on it, which, you know, you can imagine that's what you're doing. You're taking that and it's zoop, shooting you up or something like that. However you want to do it. Now on the very top of that, what you have is you get some bars that you have to negotiate in two different levels. And, you know, it's an obstacle course for the police academy that they've got going on. Now inside, the inside section of this is, you know, again, kind of like a little police area. You know, you've got, you've got, you know, somebody that is in charge. So it is most definitely important for them to, you know, keep things going. And this is kind of like an office area. So you have a chair in here. It is not a standard Lego chair. It's not a brick built chair. It's just a two by two that is hanging out here. You do have the monitor and you do have the keyboard print that is in here. You have one by one round tiles that are in here that have gauge prints on it. That's supposed to be like the coffee machine. Coffee just exists in Lego world, no matter what. Always, absolutely always. So you've got that. You've got your coffee mug. You actually have a little what is supposed to be like a mouse for your uh, minifig. So that goes into position and then it clips into this next section, which uh, this is, this is really nice. <laughs> I love the inside of this and we'll talk about it. So across the top, because we're keeping with the theme of the obstacle course, you are using this red roller coaster track piece. It's supposed to be monkey bars. 
I love it. It's supposed to be monkey bars. And you're just going across there. You don't have to use it as monkey bars. Maybe you're just running across the top of it, running across the top of the building. Anyway, you have your zip line piece here that allows you the, your little holder. You put your minifig hand on there and zip line down. And we'll find out about that here in a moment. But the little section right underneath that that has some stuff in it, you do have some flowers that are uh, potted flowers that are uh, just right out in front of the windows. You got big old windows. You got four of them here, the big solid windows. You have a what is supposed to look like a police badge. It's brick built in yellow, uses an Exo Knight shield that has a sticker on it of, of that same badge. And then on the inside of this, this is really neat. You have a dummy that is supposed to kind of look like a criminal. It's in black and white. Really kind of cool looking. It's brick built, by the way. You've got some handcuffs that are clipped into place. You have some loose weights that are here in green. They're they're like the wheel pieces that we talked about with the on the last episode with the rolly cart. These are in green. And then you have your bench press. You have your barbell ready to go here. Uh, Plates that are on it. This thing is awesome. It's kind of really cool. But you've got this brick built uh, weightlifting bench. It's, It's really nice. I like the way that it is done. So you clip that into place with the other section that we just got done talking about it. And you sit it on top of the other two. Only a few studs holding it into place. So now we're at the very top of this thing. We climbed up the wall. We jumped over um, the two different levels. We took the monkey bars. We're ready to zip line down this thing. So the cool thing is the way this was designed, yes, you can zip line on it. Yes, it does kind of, I wouldn't say clip into place, but it does technic pin into place for um, your, your minifigs and stuff because that whole modular theme that's going on, which is super important, you take your string. And it attaches from the top of your roller tra- uh, roller coaster track piece and goes the whole way down to the opposite side of your build that is on the bottom here that is the rest of your obstacle course. Now, one thing that I found is you can either make this as loose, well, as loose as it can go by adjusting the stud that is up top attached to the rope, or you can make it as tight as you would like, put a lot of tension on it just by turning those studs that hold the rope on each end. So you take your zip line down, you come down to the other side, way to the right. And this is by far my favorite section of this thing. They've got the kind of these newer style worm gears. I've, I don't recall seeing these before. You have three of them. It does have a function that is on the, uh, on the side of this so that it, what it does is it takes a, a landing piece and rotates it the whole way across, which is really cool in the way that it is done. So you jump off your platform, you're on this piece and you're kind of, if you will, riding it across, you're holding your balance and on the rear side, on the rear side of this build, there is a movement function as well. They use a rubber piece here. But this is a big, like, uh, it's a question mark inside of the triangle, like, warning, warning. And what's going on is you could actually knock your minifig off. With that, it uses a uh, Technic axle that has a little ball on the other end that just clips into place, and you, you just go with it. So you, you got to time that. you got to time that jump just right. You, you want to duck under it or however you want to do it. And then the other cool thing that you've got is you've got this giant red you know, bag, a punching bag kind of thing that is sliding in there trying to hit you. That is actually a really nice movement feature that just kind of, it's real simple gravity in the way that it moves. Anyway, so you jump off of there and what is, I I love this as well. You've got these lily pads. I think they are, uh, I think they are the three by three lily pads. They are the round tiles, three by three round tiles. And what you do is you jump on it. And at the bottom of the Technic assembly that, you know, clips into place on the opposite side, what you have is a rubber piece, another rubber, uh, just like the other one that we talked about, that little rubber cushion. And you actually kind of lily pad springboard off of it. Bing, bing, there's two of them. And then you land on the adjacent platform. And then over there, what you have is you have a, one of the police hats, you know, the the multiple, like, I think it's an octagon that is, you know, on this, what is supposed to be the top of this thing. It's got the nice little print of the police badge. Anyway, 
That is sitting on top of a minifig head on top of a podium. And then you've got some police flags that are stickers sticking up out of the back of it. Really cool stuff. So let's talk about the minifigs that come with this. And then we will tie it up with a pretty little bow. Now you get a ton of, I shouldn't say a ton. You get a lot of minifigs. You get six police minifigs here. So the first three that I'm going to talk about have the exact same print. They are like your, uh, or I'm sorry, the first four. They are like your police recruits that are going through the academy doing their stuff. Anyway, dark blue pants, very light blue for torsos. It has the police emblem that is on the front, nothing on the back. So your one guy has a happy face. He's got the really kind of st- pointed up, sticked up, messy look hair. He's got two faces. He's got one face where he's kind of sweating, freaking out, and the other where he's happy. One of your females that you have here, she's got a blue headband on on one side and then the other one as well. But uh, but what she has is a happy face and another one where she kind of seems almost like she's tired. Um, she has very long, kind of almost like dreaded braided hair that is hanging down her back. Then you have another female here. She's got blue glasses, smiley face, and then another one where she's sweating and her mouth is closed. She doesn't look the happiest. She comes with some nougat ponytail hair. Then we have our dude here that's got his little hair hat that's going on. It's this super tiny short hair piece. Anyway, so he has a cochlear implant that is going on here. Really cool to be able to see this yet again. And he's got his uh, nice little beard that he's got growing because that's important. So then we've got our, well, we've got another minifig here and he has a whistle print on his body. He's older because again, smile lines that's going on. He's got one of those helmets that have the open face, but the shield can slide down. It's not like uh, the, the shields where they have that little bar across the bottom. It is open to the chin, I should say. So he has two different faces. He has one where he's very happy and one where his one eyebrow is furrowed and he's kind of like, did you just really do that? What is wrong with you? Anyway, good print there. Dark blue and uh, the black to go with it. Then we move along here to our commander, the person in charge. She's elder as I say elder. She's older than the others. She has smile lines that she's got going on. She's got her her main police cap on, you know, that octagon that we had talked about a little bit ago. She has a badge that is printed on. She's got her tie. She's, she's dressed to the nines in her suit. Got some medals on the one side, some ribbons, I should say. So dark blue for all of her. So I love this set for its playability. I love the idea behind it. It's a lot of fun to be able to enjoy. It's fun to run through the course because there's so much that you can do. You can put them in, set them up in the weight room. You can play with the horse. You can play with the the ATV. By the way, I totally forgot to mention you do get a helmet that comes with the uh, that comes with your uh, ATV. You get some other helmets and hair pieces as well. You know, if you want your lieutenant to take off her hair or take off her hat, she, she's got a hair piece. The other guy that has the whistle has a hair piece. So a lot of hair pieces going on around here. Anyway, so a lot of stuff that you can do here. A lot of fun. The modular-esque style. It's not like Monkey Kid so much, uh, but it kind of has that feel. You just can't inter- interchange things. You can't swap things around just because of how it is designed to be an obstacle course across the top. But it's a lot of fun, a nice little build, a cute little play toy. And I I, I like it. It's not bad at all. So as a whole, so far with what we talked about with these three, I think they're, they're a good, they're good value. A hundred dollars for this one. I think it's a pretty okay price point. Maybe I could see it better at 90, the 89, 99 sounds better, you know, not horrible. It's really not horrible, but I love the headquarters for the police vehicles and the fire and all that it's, it's really enjoyable to have all of that in a centralized location. And then the fire truck is incredible by far. One of my favorite fire trucks that Lego has done in a while. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan on the bolt shooters and all that kind of stuff, but for the most part, for what it is, I really like what it is. So that's going to wrap up this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That is all, not all. That is the main focal point of Lego city. We will talk about the some of the smaller ones that ten dollar price range with a lot of them some of them that are still at that twenty dollar range we'll get to that here in the next few weeks but as a whole man this city wave is looking pretty daggum good 
So until we meet again, I'm your minifig ghost, Matt. Let's build on it. <laughs>